Hello, everyone. My name is Winifred Phillips. I'm the author of the book, A Composer's Guide to Game Music, from the MIT Press. I'm also the composer of the music for a lot of video games. These include Assassin's Creed Liberation, The Da Vinci Code, Speed Racer, Shrek the Third. I've also written music for God of War, and five games so far in the Little Big Planet franchise. I'm here to talk to you about my work for the Little Big Planet franchise, with a focus on the role of musical themes in video game composition. A musical theme is usually defined as a melody, or the melodic subject of a musical composition, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So, to start off with the most basic question, what is melody? Composer Leonard Bernstein defined melody as something you go out whistling, that's easy to remember, that sticks in your mind. Bernstein called melody the singing side of music. I always wonder, after I finish the music for a game project, after the game is released, if players are noticing or remembering the melodies I've created. And the internet is a godsend for finding that out. After Little Big Planet 2 hit retail, I noticed some unexpected reactions to one of the humorous musical tracks I wrote for the game. Here are those comments from YouTube. This song is amazing. I taught my friends and they were like, what kind of a song is this? It's just ba ba da ba da blah 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 lol. I remember reading Coach Yellow One's comment at the time and thinking, somebody's teaching their friends to sing this? That really surprised me, given the nature of the track in question. Here's another comment about the same song. I taught my three older cousins and it was hilarious. Okay, the Quant 12, what is it about this song that's making you guys want to sing it? It's not a particularly accessible song for singing along. I'm going to play a short excerpt for you now so you can see what I mean. <laughs> So what was going on here? This is a contrapuntal fugato composition, admittedly a whimsical one, but still not very user-friendly. Was what Bernstein said about melodies coming into play here? Do people want to sing melodies that have become stuck in their heads because they're familiar? Leonard Bernstein had a lot of enthusiasm for musical themes. He told us that repetition of a melodic theme makes it more pleasing and memorable. Bernstein said, it's that repetition that makes the melody stick in your mind, and it's the melodies that stick in your mind that are likely to please you the most. In other words, we have a more positive emotional reaction to something that feels familiar, even if it's only vaguely familiar. So, how does this come into play for video game themes? Themes can act like an adhesive. They bond things together. If we're progressing down the gameplay pathway and we hear a theme and then a variation of that theme later on. And then we go along for a little while, and suddenly there's another variation of that theme. And then a little while later, that theme returns again. And suddenly we feel like our journey has had a singular identity, because that theme helped define what it was. The recurring melody was a common thread, and it made our journey feel cohesive, not just a collection of events strung together, but a meaningful passage. Theme and variation can mirror the events of a game and help the player to feel more excited and enthusiastic about what's happening. What happens, though, when the music system is complex? Can musical themes be used effectively within the confines of an extremely interactive music system? The Little Big Planet franchise has a unique approach to its musical scores. Like all the other elements of the games, the music is viewed as a toy for the players to manipulate and personalize. In addition to the great levels created by the development teams, the games also offer a set of comprehensive creation tools, allowing players to have fun in a creative sandbox and pull together interactive worlds born out of their own imaginations. With these tools, players can also use the music in levels that they build. In the franchise's console games, this music becomes extremely customizable. To give players an optimal amount of personal choice, each music track is written in a vertical layering system composed of six interactive layers. 
Don't worry if you aren't sure of what I'm talking about here. I'll quickly go over this interactive music model and explain how musical themes can be integrated into the system in different ways. We can think of vertical layering as having a lot of similarities to the traditional music mixing process. When we're mixing, we're essentially setting optimum audio levels for a set of musical layers, each one representing a different instrument, or perhaps a group of instruments, if we recorded them together. All these musical performances are playing simultaneously, but we have the option to turn any of them off if we want. We can also manipulate their volume levels to change the nature of the mix. This is essentially how vertical layering works in an interactive music system. The interactive musical composition exists as a number of audio recordings, each representing a subset of instruments. Played all together, they make the whole composition complete. But each subset can be deactivated or have its volume increased or decreased. This gives the music the opportunity to react to the state of gameplay by changing its mix or its number of simultaneously playing layers. This system can make composing thematically challenging, since we're never quite sure which layers we'll be playing. Despite the challenges, it is possible to create melody-driven music in a vertical layering model. Let's look at some examples from my music for the Little Big Planet franchise. I'll start with a simple example, the Escape from San Crispin track from the Little Big Planet cross controller video game. This interactive track consists of six layers, which is the standard for console games in the Little Big Planet franchise. I'm going to play a video that briefly shows how this works. You'll see the six layers turned on and off, and they're labeled to show their contents. Okay, so now that we can see how the basic interactivity model functions, where do melodic themes fit in? Themes can actually work fairly well if the arrangement of the composition accommodates the interactivity. As composers, we have to be aware that the melody may be removed at any time, so we have to ask ourselves, can the background stand on its own? The escape from San Crispin level is a heroic space adventure, and the music alternates between trippy outer space textures and bombastic action music. Let's hear another example. Notice how a melodic theme is stated, then gently disappears for a little bit, and then is smoothly brought back. This concludes part one of this presentation. You can read more about composing music for games in my book, A Composer's Guide to Game Music, published by the MIT Press. And be sure to click the link to watch part two of this video presentation, where we'll be looking at some more complex examples of thematic music in interactive constructs, with examples from Little Big Planet 2 and Little Big Planet Vita. Thanks for watching.